One Dimensional Man – Studies in the Ideology of Advanced Industrial Society is a 1964 book by the philosopher Herbert Marcuse, in which the author offers a wide-ranging critique of both contemporary capitalism and the Communist Society of the Soviet Union, documenting the parallel rise of new forms of social repression in both these societies, as well as the decline of revolutionary potential in the West. He argues that advanced industrial society created false needs, which integrated individuals into the existing system of production and consumption via mass media, advertising, industrial management, and contemporary modes of thought. This results in a one-dimensional universe of thought and behavior, in which aptitude and ability for critical thought and oppositional behavior wither away. Against this prevailing climate, Marcuse promotes the great refusal described at length in the book as the only adequate opposition to all-encompassing methods of control. Much of the book is a defense of negative thinking. As a disrupting force against the prevailing positivism, Marcuse also analyzes the integration of the industrial working class into capitalist society and new forms of capitalist stabilization, thus questioning the Marxian postulates of the revolutionary proletariat and the inevitability of capitalist crisis. In contrast to orthodox Marxism, Marcuse champions non-integrated forces of minorities, outsiders, and radical intelligentsia, attempting to nourish oppositional thought and behavior through promoting radical thinking and opposition. He considers the trends towards bureaucracy in supposedly Marxist countries to be as oppositional to freedom as those in the capitalist West. One Dimensional Man was the book that made Marcuse famous. Topic. Summary. Marcuse strongly criticizes consumerism, arguing that it is a form of social control. He suggests that the system we live in may claim to be democratic, but it is actually authoritarian in that a few individuals dictate our perceptions of freedom by only allowing us choices to buy for happiness. In this state of unfreedom, consumers act irrationally by working more than they are required to in order to fulfill actual basic needs by ignoring the psychologically destructive effects by ignoring the waste and environmental damage it causes and by searching for social connection through material items it is even more irrational in the sense that the creation of new products calling for the disposal of old products fuels the economy and encourages the need to work more to buy more an individual loses his humanity and becomes a tool in the industrial machine and a cog in the consumer machine. Additionally, advertising sustains consumerism, which disintegrates societal demeanor, delivered in bulk and informing the masses that happiness can be bought, an idea that is psychologically damaging. There are alternatives to counter the consumer lifestyle. Anti-consumerism is a lifestyle that demotes any unnecessary consumption, as well as unnecessary work, waste, etc. But even this alternative is complicated by the extreme interpenetration of advertising and commodification because everything is a commodity, even those things that are actual needs. In a 1964 letter to the New York Review of Books, Georg H. Frum, William Lice et al. outlined the major themes of the book as follows. One, the concept of one-dimensional man asserts that there are other dimensions of human existence in addition to the present one and that these have been eliminated. It maintains that the spheres of existence formerly considered as private e.g. sexuality have now become part of the entire system of social domination of man by man, and it suggests that totalitarianism can be imposed without terror. Two, technological rationality, which impoverishes all aspects of contemporary life, has developed the material bases of human freedom, but continues to serve the interests of suppression. There is a logic of domination in technological progress under present conditions, not quantitative accumulation, but a qualitative leap is necessary to transform this apparatus of destruction into an apparatus of life. Three, the analysis proceeds on the basis of negative or dialectical thinking, which sees existing things as other than they are and is denying the possibilities inherent in themselves. It demands freedom from the oppressive and ideological power of given facts. Four, the book is generally pessimistic about the possibilities for overcoming the increasing domination and unfreedom of technological society. It concentrates on the power of the present establishment to contain and repulse all alternatives to the status quo. Topic. Reception 
One Dimensional Man was the book that made Marcuse famous. Critical theorist Douglas Kellner writes in Herbert Marcuse and the Crisis of Marxism that One Dimensional Man was one of the most important books of the 1960s and one of the most subversive books of the 20th century. Despite its importance, it was due to its subversive nature severely criticized by both orthodox Marxists and academic theorists of various political and theoretical commitments. Despite its pessimism, represented by the citation of the words of Walter Benjamin at the end of this book that, Neuer um der Hoffnungslosen Willen ist uns die Hoffnung gegeben. It is only for the sake of those without hope that hope is given to us. It influenced many in the New Left as it articulated their growing dissatisfaction with both capitalist societies and Soviet communist societies. Philosopher Stephen Hicks argues that the book's popularity marked a strong turn towards irrationality and violence among younger leftists. Topic. See also. Repressive desublimation. Totalitarian democracy. Minority rights. J. L. Talman. Drux Flux, an animated short inspired by One Dimensional Man. Critical theory. Criticism of capitalism Inverted totalitarianism Superficiality References External links Bibliographic listing including reviews and courses using the book Full text online at Marcuse.org